Hello everyone, this is Phil and welcome back to Hundred K Show. Today we got Lenovo Vive X. It's a five inch full HD display smartphone with the world's, uh, one of the world's slimmest and lightest. That's uh, 6.9 millimeters thick and 121 grams heavy. Uh, that's pretty slim and light profile. Uh, it's got a receiver on the top, a wide viewing angle front facing camera with the Lenovo logo and the five inch of a full HD display, many home and back here. That's a typical Samsung layout and it seems like uh, many of the manufacturers decided to share that characteristic. On the right is a volume rocker with the micro SIM card slot right there and the 3.5 millimeters headphone jack on the top with the power key on the left and on the bottom there's a micro USB port that's upside down for you and the 13 megapixel camera with the BSI sensor and the second microphone LED flash and the Lenovo logo there as well and on the back back panel's got its um, pattern right there and it's quite good looking and it seems like it can uh, contribute to avoid some scratches on the back of your smartphone of course that um, popped out camera is going to uh, contribute some too, although it's not exactly a great feature to have a popped out camera. And um, on the bottom and linking to the front and the side edge, there is a chrome coated edges and it's not actually that terrible. I, I really made myself to hate these um, chrome glossy bling bling kind of thing is, but uh, it's not that bad. It's not that bad at all. And um, we can see from the SIM card tray right there instead of the SIM card slot, but we can see the battery is not detachable and it indeed is not. Uh, it's got a 2000 milliamps of the built-in battery and the battery cover is not replaceable nor detachable. So be aware of that. Turning on the screen, we do have a unique interface from Lenovo. Lenovo has named this the Smart UX. That's quite boring name, isn't it? Anyway, uh, it seems like MIUI and um, I, I really, Doubted that it's a copy of the MIUI and uh, it does have a lot of features that we have seen from the MIUIs, but um, it's not MIUI itself. It's Lenovo's own and it seems like they decided to uh, learn from many of the features of the other ROMs. And uh, that includes um, this uh, expanded the, the notification toggles and the settings menu it gives us many of its own new features, starting from pocket mode and um, it's got, it's got a neat feature called a smart dollar. So when you're walking on the street or you're riding on a bus, you are trying to dial someone and you tilt your phone to a certain uh, angle and the dollar, the numbers will tilt as well. They're, they're gonna squish in to the angle that you wanna call uh, with your hands. And uh, this erase key right there is gonna move as well. That's quite neat and tapping on the menu key gives you the kill switch and um, it usually has around a gigabyte of RAM on the initial boot and maintains to have free RAM around the 400 and 500 megabytes at all times. That's quite good uh, of a memory, manage uh, memory management. Let's go back to settings and um, it's got a neat unique feature starting from uh, ranging again from the screen off unlock is called the, all right, let's shake to unlock first and you can swipe from the menu keys to unlock the phone. This is quite fun, and I, I seldom find this useful. And it's also got a function called the wide touch, so you tap and hold of a wide area, like your thumb, and um, it's gonna bring you some of the back keys or the some keys that are useful when you're having a one-hand operation. That's pretty neat. Aside from these features, the main thing that matters is the, the main usage of the phone is the launcher and the overall performances. And it seems to have a problem with that. Alrighty, let's start with this. Let's get back to the specs. It's got a MediaTek quad-core processor. I, I forgot the exact name of it, but it's an A7 1.5 gigahertz quad-core processor. But don't let the... Uh, number of the cores fool you, although it's got quad core, we have, you know, we have learned that quad core doesn't exactly mean the excellence in performances, and this is no exception. Although it's quad core, is based on A7 and the graphics isn't exactly impressive, and it's running a full HD display on the CPU, and that's not so great. While it does have two gigabytes of RAM at 16 or 32 gigabytes of storage without the micro SD card expansion, um, seems to have a hard time operating it. It shouldn't be because of the Android version, because uh, since it does have one of the latest Android, it's not the latest, but it's not that bad running at Android 4.2.2 Jelly Bean. So with that, it does have some frame drops. 
like these. And let's fire up a web page, our own. What else do we have to run? And um, the, the loading of the web page itself isn't that bad. The, the bad part is the scrolling. It lags, it certainly lags, and um, it kind of makes you, it, it kind of annoys you. Uh, if, if you're okay with this, the overall performance itself isn't that bad. The performance strictly isn't that bad. Loading up on web page and switching between the pages aren't that terrible, while the animation and the visual glitches do annoy you. Like these frame drops, these are not only because I'm running a third party launcher, which is supposed to actually make the performance better, but the original launcher does show up the some of the frame drops, and this isn't because of the power saving mode or anything. This isn't the full performance mode and is still having that. So with the performances, we do have to mention about that 13 megapixel camera. The camera itself, the photo quality isn't that bad. Actually, it's quite good. It's quite good, but it does pose some noises on the photos. So except for that, it's a takes decent photo, but do not expect any kind of a good sound quality when you're listening to your music on your 3.5 uh, millimeter headphone jack because it's got a white noise overall. Overall, the whole time it's playing something. And uh, it's one of the worst sound quality and the noises that I've seen on a smartphone, so don't have any kind of expectation. The speaker on the top, this guy works as a loudspeaker for your music as well, while it works for your receiver uh, on your phone calls. And the speaker itself is not bad. It's just about the decent sound quality. That's, a good, that's an okay part. So here's the verdict. Uh, the verdict is that it does have its merits at the light and slim profile. It, I, I was... Uh, I have been enjoying the, uh, using Vivex since it's really one of the light and the slim smartphone. And the design and overall the Lenovo has gotten a lot better. Uh, I don't exactly like its design, but um, this guy kind of resembles of the uh, Mixture 8 tablet. And um, we can see that it does definitely, they do share its design identity and languages. And that's a good part. It's, it means that they are having some kind of a uh, sign of a, of a identity over all their products. And that's a good part. So we can see that from that design language and the solid build quality, this guy is really, really built solid. And I really like it. It's really good. <laughs> and with that, we can see that it's a good piece of phone, except for the performance and some of the multimedia perspectives. So other than that, it's a good one, but uh, really, would you want to pay 400 and something bucks for a laggy smartphone? I doubt it, really. So if you don't mind the performances, which you have to, then you're paying for this guy. Uh, it should be an okay smartphone, but since you are going to be using it every, for everyday uses and lags, strongly should annoy you, at, like these lags. And... Um, then this guy should not be your next smartphone. So that was Lenovo Vive X, and don't forget to tap on there to subscribe to hear uh, more of the reviews on reviews and verdicts on the latest smartphones. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.